Hi everyone, this is Richard Miller, Chair of the Elder Law Department at Mandelbaum Barrett. I'm here to talk to you today about beneficiary designations. So beneficiary designations is probably one of the most, if not the most common mistake in estate planning. People think that they do their estate planning, they finish their will, everything's in order, and there's nothing else to worry about. But that's not always the case because what people don't often understand is that beneficiary designations supersede the will. So if someone names a beneficiary designation that's inconsistent with the contents of the will, that beneficiary designation is gonna control. So some examples of assets that have beneficiary designations are retirement accounts, annuities, life insurance policies, payable on death accounts. So you may have a will that says one thing, but if your beneficiary designation says something else, that's what's going to supersede the contents of that document. Many times it doesn't make much of a difference because the people you name as beneficiary of those accounts are the same people that you name as beneficiary in your will. But there are many times where those things differ. So for example, if you're a couple that have children that create a trust in your will for the benefit of minor children until they're 18, 21, 25, and you um, create a trust in the will for those children, that's terrific, but if you have a beneficiary designation that just simply names your children as contingent beneficiaries, that may go to them at age 18, or it may get held in an account until they turn age 18, which is inconsistent with, you want, with, with, with what you want in the will. Likewise, if you have a situation where you may have a special needs child that's on government benefits, same thing. Your will may create an appropriate supplemental trust for that child, but if the beneficiary designation just names the child individually, that's gonna pass outside the will, go to the child and potentially disqualify that child from government benefits. Another example is if there's a blended family, there is a trust for the benefit of a second spouse in a will, that trust is there to, to provide assets for the trust for life, and then ultimately maybe children of a prior marriage. But if that spouse is named as the beneficiary of the will, then those assets go directly to the spouse and may not be controlled by the terms of that trust and can then be disposed of by that second spouse, maybe to the exclusion of the children of the, the first decedent. So it's really important when doing your estate planning to make sure you not only get your documents in line, but to make sure that your beneficiary designations are consistent with those documents to make sure that everything is done in a coordinated fashion so that testamentary wishes ultimately can be achieved.